Hi, my name's Zitali and in this video I'll be making an animated sticker or emoji for Zempa. Just a heads up, as this is a time lapse video, it does contain quite a lot of flashing and fast moving images. Due to the nature of recording and animation, you will actually see me flicking back and forth between different frames quite rapidly throughout this video. So just a heads up, if you are sensitive to that kind of thing, perhaps don't watch this video. So to start with, I'm going to be sketching out my major frames. I use Artflow to do this, and I'll actually use Artflow to draw and colour the individual frames. And then I'll use another program called Flipper Clip to actually do the animation and to make some of the uh, less important in-between frames. So this particular animation is the nod animation. So you can see here I'm drawing the extreme up head pose and the middle head. So when the head is in the middle of the nod and then the downwards, so the extreme down pose. Once I've done these sketches, I actually will then switch across to Flipper Clipper or Flipper Clip uh, as I want to see how these will look in motion. Now, because Flipper Clip is an animation program, it does have an onion effect you can turn on, which is what you can see here with the red and the green lines. Basically, it shows you what the next frame or the frame behind it is doing. So you can edit the current frame to be in between these two. And essentially what I've done here is I've just copied my three frames of animation and now I'm making edits to them in the program. So I can flick through the frames and make sure that there's a smooth transition between all of the different frames. Once I'm happy with how the animation sketch is looking, then I pass it back to Zimper to make sure that they're also happy with it before I proceed with actually colouring and line arting all of these frames. It's really important that I get the sketch right to begin with as I don't want to be making major changes to my frames once I've fully coloured them, coloured them and line arted them as to change one frame usually means I need to change about three or four frames. So I like to make sure the sketch is detailed enough and the motion within the sketch is nice enough or good enough that the person I'm sending it to can clearly see what I have in mind and that they won't need to ask for any edits once I've started colouring and line arting the individual frames. Once we're happy with how the animation sketch looks, I then will actually export this animation as PNG frames. So there's a way you can save in this way. Basically, we go to make the movie instead of selecting a, a JPEG or sorry, a MP4 or a uh, GIF file, you can actually select to save it as a zip file that has all the individual frames saved as PNG files. And the reason I do this is so I have all of the frames saved separately and then I can load those frames into Artflow and then continue to draw them from Artflow. For the actual colouring of the frames, I followed the same principle as I did with the plain stickers and emojis. So I uh, do have a video on me making a bunch of non-animated stickers for Zempa. And so I just stick with the black outline using the bamboo pen and I just use the exact same colours I used for the stickers as they are, you know, there's a swatch for Zempa's character that I stick to when making art for them. Now 
when I actually draw these frames I will be drawing more than just the three I originally sketched so I'm using the frames that I created in flipper clip uh, as a guide to create my more solid frames but I won't be drawing all of them I used to draw every single frame individually and then color it all and then load it all in but honestly so these frames go by so quickly you're not going to notice if one of them has just been edited in the program itself the reason I used to not use flipper clip to do my editing and my drawing is if you use the transfer form tool on any of the parts and this is the same with Artflow it actually blurs the line and you lose some definition so if I if I have an important frame I'm always going to draw it fresh in Artflow so that the lines are crisp so for anything that's going to be more than one frame so some of the frames actually it sort of pauses on them a while so I'll have the same picture as more than one frame all of those frames I have drawn and colored and made sure are spot on but some of the frames in between the hand drawn frames will actually just be ones that I have used the transform tool in flipper clip but you can't really tell that's what I've done so if I drew every single frame individually it would take me three times as long to do these animations and um, as I said I used to do that but after sort of learning ways to do animations a bit better in the program itself I found this is an easier method and looks just as good especially if I play around with the frame rate as well to make sure that the motion still comes out good. Now this did take me four hours to do an animation and that is generally how long a simple animation like this will take me. The shake head animation I did for Zempa as well uh, that actually took me less time. It was a less complicated to draw a shake head, which is essentially just the front on face and then two side faces. Uh, doing the nod is a bit more complicated because I do actually have to draw like the underside of the head and then the top of the head and then, you know, the front on sort of look as well. So it is a little bit more complicated than the shake head animation. So it did take a bit longer. The last animation I did for Zempa was a waving hand animation and does contain more than just the head so it's sort of like a laying down pose uh, from uh, I guess a torso up and they're waving at the camera. The actual motion itself didn't take me too long but because I had to draw a full dragon and I did try a couple of different ways of doing this and undid a bunch of my own work so this did take me a bit longer then the nod animation so on like if I average out all the hours I just said four hours each but really the shake head animation took me less time and the hand wave animation took me more time um, but yeah the, this animation here which is the nod animation is about average for a sort of run-of-the-mill animations that I do. Now at this point I was still sort of figuring out how I was going to do that uh, dangly uh, feather accessory. Uh, originally I had it completely on a separate layer so you'll see me now creating a separate layer for the dangly but when, once I started animating it I realized that I actually want the leather strap that's holding onto the horn to be part of the dragon's layer and just the part that dangles down to be a separate layer as I don't ever really want to change where the leather strap is positioned on the horn in comparison to the dragon. Uh, I just want to change where the dangle like how the feathers and the dice are flowing. So after this first frame I did the separate uh, the separate accessory after that I draw the leather strap straight onto the line art and color it with the rest of the dragon's frame and I just do the dice and the feather as a separate layer so you can actually load different layers into flipper clipper it does have the ability to have several different layers so I can edit things independently which is what I do to get the motion for the accessory you can also color cut erase 
and do quite a lot of other art type of programs in Flip, Flipper Clip, but I do find that because it's more focused on animation, it doesn't have the pen pressure sensitivity I'm used to, so I just can't get nice sharp lines like I do in Artflow, which is why I will stick to using Artflow for the actual drawing of the frames rather than using Flipper Clip to do draw all of it in. I prefer to do this sort of half and half method. Now rather than colouring and line arting all of my frames at once and then loading them into the, the animation program, I actually like to do them one at a time and replace my sketch layered, my sketch frames with the coloured ones just to make sure that I'm still on the right track for things. Sometimes I find once I've put the frames actually in that I might have misdrawn something or something's off and the animation doesn't flow the same way I was expecting it to. So I find doing it this way wastes less time because I actually see the animation progress as I create the coloured frames and I can still make sure I'm on the right track. So you can see here that I have replaced quite a few of my frames already and I'm actually just editing these hand-drawn frames in the program itself. So I've cut and moved the head to be in between my two drawn frames um, to try and get a smoother transition in the nod. I actually learned a lot about how things move Whilst doing this animation, I have already done quite a lot of animations for uh, Day of Dragons Discord. It's a, a game that I help create the comic and I do Discord stickers for and stuff. And I've done quite a few animated stickers for them. But none of them really contained any loose hanging things that sort of flow or move with the motion of anything. So I found learning how to make this dice and feather accessory move quite an interesting process originally i had it wrong so as i moved the head i had the motion of the feather going in the wrong direction and i had to change it and fix it but i actually found this process to be quite pleasing i quite enjoyed the motion of the feather and the dice and like trying to keep in mind the weight of the dice and how the feather is lighter and how how it would move in relation to the direction that the dice are moving and the head is moving. It was quite an interesting exercise and I did learn a lot about the, the sort of movement of objects, I suppose. This is pretty much all I have to say about this for now. I will just be continuously making frames and putting them in and sliding the bar back and forth and making sure the animation looks all right. I do decide to focus on just the head nod for the first part and then stick do the accessory right at the end. So you will see mostly just head nodding for now and then near the end I'm just focusing on the accessory again. Uh, I'll probably chime in right at the end just to say some final words on like saving your animation and getting it ready for Discord.
So this animation's pretty much done. It looks pretty stupid at high speed, but when you see it at normal speed, it'll make sense. Uh, just a note on saving your animation. If you are making animation stickers for Discord, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. Uh, Flipper Clip can only save as GIF files, but they do actually need to be APNG files. So I use an online converter to convert them from a GIF file to an APNG file. They do need to be below 512 kilobits uh, in order to be uploadable to Discord. So I also use the optimization tool in the web app converter uh, to compress it and make sure it's the correct size. If you are making a complicated animation, it is a good idea to try and limit your colors as you will find it exceedingly difficult to get it below the 512 kilobyte limit if you have too many frames and too many colors. I had this problem with the Get Well sticker for the Day of Dragons Discord. It was two characters, it was lots of colors. It took me over an hour to find a way to compress it so it was just under the 512. So I would advise to plan in advance and save yourself the stress of trying to do that. Here it is, the finished nod animation. I'm quite happy with it. I really like how the dangly moves back and forth and the movement of the nod, and I hope you like it too, Zemba. Thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Bye!